We've never washed the outside of our windows in this house. There's little fails here and there, lessons learned. We are going to be really rolling up our sleeves and getting some work done. A palace. Well, hey friends, it's Natalie. It's so glad you stopped by my channel to hang out with me and Weston, he's around here somewhere, uh, for this video. This is a messy to minimal episode, but it's a very special version. And you guys have been requesting this for a while that we share with you sort of a cleanup, declutter, fall prep around our property. And so today we're gonna take you outside. This video is going to be mostly outside as we do some projects around our property that need to get done before the new season starts. We're going to be taking some really messy areas of our property and totally transforming them. I'm gonna do a declutter in my garden. I have been on a quest in the month of August to really get my life together and I've shared videos with you over the last few weeks of different projects that I've been working on inside the house and now we're gonna look outside and get some stuff done out there. So I hope you're ready for some good motivation and encouragement along the way. If you enjoyed this video while you're watching it, why don't you give it a thumbs up? That helps me out so much and drop this emoji in the comments so that I can come say hi to you. So let's get to work. Welcome to the dirt pile. This is like our front yard here. There's the driveway that goes out to the road. There's the second building on our property. This is the pump house slash like garden tool storage shed. We've been scoping out a place to build a wood shed because we do have a uh, fireplace. And when the power goes out, that is such a nice thing to have. So Weston's already been hard at work with the tractor, moving some dirt. And before he got started, this area next to our well pump house was a little hill that had a lot of vegetation and small trees on it. He's been working to clear stuff out, but then- There's a stump in <laughs> He ran into a stump. We're no. gonna get it out. Okay, so what did you try before? I just tried digging it out. So we're gonna try and use a rope and- Pull it out? See if it pulls out, so. With the tractor? Yeah. Okay. Sounds oh, no. good. We'll so I'm gonna out. get the kids off the dirt pile because we don't let them play around the tractor. We try to keep them nice and safe. We're gonna have a stump fest. I mean, right now it's a dirt fest. My goodness, they're, they're covered from head to toe. If that isn't childhood on acreage, I don't know what is. Dad's gonna pull the stump out. Come on, guys. is very pleased with himself. What a project getting that stump out was. It was a true stump fest in bluey fashion. But Weston was determined to not give up and he got it out there with a combination of the tractor, straps, ropes, hooks, his truck. And now he cleared the spot even more to build the woodshed. So we have the tractor fired up again. He's digging holes with the backhoe um, and we are putting wooden poles into the ground and my job is to hold the level while he gets the hole filled back up with dirt. I'm not afraid to 
having ourselves a little thunderstorm. There's a rooster somewhere going crazy. My garden will love the extra nitrogen. <laughs> oh. Hmm? It's starting to rain. Taking my morning visit out to the garden to see what the thunderstorm did for growth out here. You get a thunderstorm one day and then it's like overnight, stuff just grows like crazy. I've always heard my mom tell stories about that. Now that I have my own garden, it's true. So many new squash blossoms over here. We have, I wanna say like 50 to 60 zucchini that we're gonna be able to harvest this year. Pumpkins aren't doing so great though. That's a bummer, I was hoping to have at least a gourd or two growing. Cabbage is growing like crazy. All the lettuce and everything is just insane. And I have some work to do out here in the garden to sort of get stuff prepped for fall. Oh, look at that. My corn over there is starting to tassel. I see ears of corn. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. So part of the outside chores that we're gonna do here uh, as we prep to get back into the fall season is going to be working a bit in the garden. But right now, other than watering it this morning, the focus today is going to get this woodshed built. Let me show you what Weston's working on right now. Oh, the sound of a circular saw. Honestly, one of my favorite sounds in the world. How's it going over here? Nice. As you can see, we got all the poles in the ground yesterday before the thunderstorm hit. And now, Weston, you're working on getting like slats in the side? Yeah. Okay, cool. Wow, it's already starting to take shape. This is all Weston's design. And we're just going along with sort of this image that he has in his mind. We're gonna trim this huckleberry bush so I'm eating the little berries that are ready right here. Might as well before this thing comes down because it is sticking into <laughs> our shed right now. I came over here to say, hey, what can I do to help? And Weston just told me that my job right now is to go to the far side of the second building on our property. We call it the garage, but it's not really a garage. There's a shop in the front and a finished out bonus room in the back, but we still call it the garage. And um, so on the, the far side of the garage, we have a pile of scrap wood that we have um, salvaged from various projects. We even brought some of it with us from our old house uh, projects that we worked on over there. I don't like to keep a lot of just in case items on hand, but as we've gotten more and more into homesteading and living more self-sufficiently, especially with the price of anything these days, but especially lumber, um, we do try to keep scrap wood and stuff on hand and we always end up using it always not a piece of wood goes to waste around here if you guys remember that swing set that we bought for the kids that we didn't use half of it able to grab pieces of lumber from that we're gonna get this all leveled out and everything once we've got some stuff built in here but this will be a nice deep woodshed to store what we need to store we've got roof plans for it it's gonna be higher in the front here, lower in the back, so that water can run down it. And we are already well on our way to making this happen. That's going on the gram. Well, the walls are all up and level. We cut down the uh, poles to be the right angle for the slant of the roof. And now it's time to raise the roof. Let's do it.
it's a wood shed. <laughs> we just need wood for it now. We just need wood for it now. We have a couple of leads um, on wood to put into here, but now it has a spot. So Weston's just finishing up a couple of little things, making the uh, ground underneath a little bit more level. He installed a gutter at the back and doing just little finish work and stuff like that. And what I'm gonna work on today, the garden needs a little bit of help. And I wanted to get out here um, before it got too warm and sunny in the garden. Um, because once that happens, then the wasps have been coming out really bad. We don't spray for bugs or anything. It's an organic garden. I kind of want to let the bugs and the critters do their thing, but I am allergic to bees. Um, I have my EpiPen with me whenever I go out into the garden, but I've had to avoid being out here because it's it's been so bad. It's just not worth the risk. So stuff has kind of grown up. I haven't done a lot of weeding. I've got stuff like that to do out here. This lettuce patch, let me show you. Look at my lettuce cabbage patch. This is crazy. And I guess I didn't get out here early enough because the sun's already here, but I'm not seeing wasps. So I think I have a little bit of time. This is endive. It started out this big, if you guys remember when I planted it. That was a start from my mom. I've got the Four Seasons lettuce, my red leaf lettuce, and we make salads like all the time and we cannot keep up. I just planted too much. This is crazy. And this is what the really hot weather that we've had in Western Washington has done. When it gets up to this point, like it's already starting to get like little blossoms and stuff. I don't want this to go to seed and these leaves are really bitter right now. So I'm just going to whack it back. I'll be able to throw some of this into the woods for the bunnies to enjoy or put some of it into my composter. Cabbage is actually doing really well. There's only a couple of like these little holes and stuff, which is normal from little bugs, but I'm getting good cabbage heads there. So I kind of need to take care of this, groom this a little bit because it is looking like a jungle. Um, this is my uh, zucchini that I was talking about earlier. There are so many zucchini. This was supposed to be spaghetti squash. That's what my mom labeled it when she gave me the starts, but those are zucchini as well. Um, that's okay. We love zucchini. I use it a lot in cooking. Um, and these are supposed to be pumpkins, but all they're doing is blooming. And then the blooms die and go away and there's no fruit starting to come out. And if you see snakes in the garden, they're fake. They're to scare the birds away. So yeah, if anyone has any suggestions or experience with the phantom pumpkin blooms, let me know. This is where the corn is. It's amongst the weeds. We definitely have got weeds going on in the garden. But we're starting to get little ears of corn. It's so cool. After our thunderstorm the other day, um, the next day we had a crazy windstorm and all of my peas fell over and they went into shock. As you can see, we've got all this brown here. That's not from underwatering. They, they get ample water. It's just, they got blown over. So I think I'm going to take this pea trellis down, harvest the peas that I have left on here, call it good. The sunflowers are, are looking a little sad, but I'm hoping that it went, if I leave them here, they will go to seed so I can plant sunflowers next year, or we can have like roasted sunflower seeds on our salads. The herb patch is doing great. We pick herbs from it all the time. I could trim some of the ones that are going to blossom. That's another thing that happens when it's quite warm outside um, and then there's the strawberry patch that was a total fail on my part i didn't realize you needed to line these planters with something um, any water that i put into here just falls right through or evaporates up off the top and the strawberry plants in the early time like when they started producing fruit it wasn't hot enough for that to be happening and so we got lots of fruit from it so i'm thankful for that but when it got hotter outside um, it just zapped them and, and they're dead so i want to kind of pull these out i've got a tomato plant that did not thrive that i'm just going to kind of get out of here it's totally dead i just want to clean up the garden i want it to look a bit less uh, jungly, a little less shaggy, a little less brown in areas. I think if I free up some room where this pea trellis is, that will give me some space to plant maybe some fall, fall stuff. I don't know. I'm still doing some research for our area about what things I can plant, but we have harvested so much from this garden. I would say it's been a success, but I'm a first time gardener. So there's little fails here and there, lessons learned, things I would probably do different next year. And even the most experienced gardener, if they stay humble, they would admit 
that there's stuff that they're always learning as well. So let's take care of this before it gets too sunny because that sun is creeping up. Try to wake up from a dream It's harder than it seems Birds are flying all around Some fall and hit the ground This is where I should belong Salad, anyone? Still crazy and overgrown, but not a jungle anymore. I'm gonna put the last of this over on this little pile where the deer and the bunnies, they always come through here and they eat the blackberries here. And uh, I'm gonna give them a little treat. Bon appetit. Get fattened up for the winter, y'all. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Let's hope we don't finish that. <laughs> Look at that beautiful sky. My goodness, what a beautiful day it is. Oh. Oh, gross. That's so gross. It looks like beef jerky. <laughs> oh, gross. Well, let's take that on our camping trip. Chicken of the gutter. This doesn't fit, Mom. <laughs> Whenever I climb a ladder and look up at a rooftop, I'm a little girl again. Because every once in a while, my dad would let me safely go up onto the roof with him when he was cleaning out gutters. I climbed up the ladder to get a little footage of Weston, and I'm just looking at the shingles and feeling like I'm eight years old again. I'm so glad we're doing this now before the rain comes back and our gutters start overflowing because they were filled with so much crap. Lesson's working on the back of the house right now, um, but I was just enjoying the beautiful blue sky and watching the kids run around and play and man, it was a year ago today that we first walked around this place looking to purchase it. Um, and that whole story of how we found this place, how we ended up buying it and all of that, it's very unique, very special. And I actually made a whole video about it, like a story time for you guys. Um, so I will link that video in the description box if you want to watch it. But I remember the first thing I thought when we drove in here and got out of the car and just started looking around before we even walked into the house, it was a beautiful sunny day like this with these gorgeous clouds and this blue sky. And that's the first thing that I noticed is how how much sky there is. It's sort of rare to find a piece of property like this that's so deep in the woods and has trees all around, but you don't feel this claustrophobic like trees are like right around you and making everything really dark because the back two acres of the property are down in a glen, which means that the tops of the trees in the back part are kind of at eye level for us. So they don't block our view of the sky and it's just that was the what struck me when we first walked around here and i could just envision our kids running around and enjoying this place and riding their bikes and i envisioned a little garden working on projects with weston and here we are exactly a year later and we are doing those things god is so good that is what i'm pondering and i'm just praying about and thanking God for. As I continue to do a little bit of work, I'm gonna get back in the garden. I've got some weeding to do. I'm gonna take care of that strawberry bed, try to remedy my pee situation. <laughs> and Weston's gonna finish up these gutters, but I just had to share that with you guys. You never know what is just around the corner, what God has for you. Because the week prior to us walking around this place, we had uh, yet another offer rejected for a place that we wanted to buy and this place is so much better. God knew that this would be the place for us and here we are a year later just loving it. There is no river that runs wide as your goodness. There is no mountain that stands tall as your faithfulness. And there's nothing else I'll ever need All of my days, your mercy follows me oh, 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 oh. 
a wheelbarrow full of weeds, I would say, is a good day's work in the garden. I wanted to make it past the corn and around the other side, but the hornets have arrived in the cabbage patch, so it's time to call it a day for now. I'm not quite ready to take the pea trellis down. I set it back up. I hopefully made it a little bit stronger. I harvested a bunch of mature peas, um, but there are still so many tiny little baby peas that I just want to give them their best chance. Maybe the next windstorm will take this thing down, but this has been one of my biggest producers for our garden and we've just been enjoying it so much and there's still a lot of time left in this plant's growing season. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it another shot. Very happy with the progress that I made today in the gardens, feeling a lot better. We have some more weeds and stuff. We'll probably just take like a weed eater, weed whacker to that. Do you guys hear these squirrels? They sit up in these trees like I was showing you before that little, that was a little chipmunk. Um, and they eat the green pine cones and find the seeds in them and then they drop all of the little shavings from the pine cones as they like eat them. They make such a mess and they are so loud, but they're adorable. Speaking of adorable, um, my kids just ran up to me to tell me that apparently we have some blackberries that are ready to harvest. So no fall prep in the Pacific Northwest would be complete without doing a little bit of blackberry harvesting. So let's go do that. All of my days, your mercy Well, would you look at that? This is just a tiny fraction of what we have. It would be impossible to pick all of the berries on this property, but what a haul. I don't even know how many are in here. I do know that there are probably 10 times as many bugs in this bowl as there are berries, so I'm gonna rinse these off. You have to eat them right after you rinse them because they will start to go bad. Um, so we're having some people over tonight. I actually have to change and take a shower. I'm all sweaty from the garden and blackberry picking, so I'm gonna do that. Rinse the blackberries, and then we have one more thing to share with you in this video for our outdoor fall prep that we're doing, um, and that is washing the windows, outside specifically. They are so grimy. They were not clean when we moved in, and we've never washed the outside of our windows in this house. It hasn't quite been a year since we've moved in. It's been a year since we walked around the place, but in a couple of months, it will be a year since we moved in, but still. It needs to be done so bad. So Weston is grabbing his squeegee set out. He's gonna get scrubbing the outside. And since he's doing that, might as well scrub the inside of the windows so that we can see a job well done. Even though that's not technically an outdoor project, I want to enjoy the benefits of the outside of the windows being washed. And what a better way to do it than to wash the inside of the windows. We're going under, there's nothing we can do. Weston is using a whole squeegee and Dawn dish soap and white vinegar because the outside of our windows are so darn grimy. I was literally watching clouds of dust flying at our house when Weston was working on the tractor last week. So he's got the squeegee set up, but for the inside, I am just using a e-cloth with water, which in my opinion is the best way to clean windows. I love e-cloths. Uh, Weston does need a little microfiber cloth to, you know, do a little bit of detailing and wipe off the squeegee. And he was using a crappy one that he has from Amazon that he got a while back uh, to wash our vehicles. And it was just not working, it was making it even worse. So I handed him an e-cloth drying rag and it worked like a charm. Not a sponsor, I have worked with e-cloth in the past, but that was only after I had already talked them up. <laughs>
the better. At least that's what they say. And there you have it. This was about a three week process um, from start to finish as we worked off and on throughout the different projects for this video. We actually went camping <laughs> for a little while there. Uh, no, we did not bring our chicken of the gutter, uh, gutter jerky. <laughs> But it feels so good to get these projects done, to get those gutters cleaned out for when the rainy season hits. We weren't able to really do any of this when we first moved into this house, um, which was in October of last year, because there was so much that needed to be done on the interior of the house with the kitchen that flooded and the remodeling that we needed to do and the new flooring going in, the painting happening on the inside and all of the renovations and stuff. So it feels, I cannot even tell you guys, it feels so good, so satisfying to be able to really get our ducks in a row um, on the outside of the house. That winter cordwood is piling up like it ought to, which makes me so very happy. Even though we do have electric heat here and we actually got this whole new HVAC system in our house this year, our electricity goes out all the time in this house. So it's so nice to know that we can rely on our wood stove, not to mention the fact that even though we do have electric heat, I will probably be building a fire at least a few times a week because it is so cozy and I am ready to be cozy. I don't know about you guys. The weather here in Western Washington has definitely taken a shift toward the cooler, the breezier, the leaves on our trees are already starting to change and get all brown and yellow. Since I filmed that garden segment in this video, stuff has already changed in the garden. Sad to report, the peas did not survive. So those are probably gonna be ripped out to make room for some autumn planting and I'll probably share that with you guys in a later video. But I just wanted to thank you guys for joining us today, for hanging out with us while we got some projects done around here and made it a little bit farther on this quest to get our life together as we're approaching the change of the season. I have another back to fall video planned for you guys for the month of August and I might continue doing these back to fall videos until fall officially starts let me know if you would like to see that or what you would like to see in this series moving forward but next week's video has a very special announcement in it that you won't want to miss so make sure that you're subscribed with the bell button turned on or just set a little alarm on your phone because sometimes notifications fail me on YouTube I wish they'd get that figured out and um, just set a little alarm on your phone Tuesdays 7 a.m. PDT I have a new video go up and I pretty much always do a premiere it's the highlight of my week to hang out with you guys during those premieres and I appreciate you being here so much, whether you join the premieres or not. Thanks so much for spending a little part of your day here with us on my channel and I'll catch you later. I'm